Hello and welcome to Zero to Hero Microsoft Intune Training Series and you are in day 10. So in this series we are gonna learn complete Microsoft Intune and we will focus today with the continuation of Microsoft Intune enrollment and post to that a little configuration also that we are gonna learn. And as I said earlier we would have a different uh, video on Windows Autopilot. We are not going to cover this specific topic in this video. Other than that, we would be covering all of these things. In fact, the blue colors are things that are already covered in the uh, previous uh, video, which is a day nine. So that being said, uh, let's actually uh, focus on a couple of things, uh, starting with the uh, enrollment notification. Let's say if there is an a device that is getting enrolled in Microsoft Intune, the end user should receive an automated email notification. So that's what we are going to configure as a first step. So let's focus on enrollment notifications. Navigate to Microsoft Intune Admin Center and click on devices and you can look into the device onboarding or you can choose any of these platform. In all these platforms, you have a enrollment notification option. So that being said, let's actually click on uh, onboarding under enrollment. You have here option for enrollment notification for Windows. Similarly, you might have here a notification for Apple and Android, right? So everywhere for every operating system, uh, platform base you also have the specific configuration so uh, every place you could you know configure this so we are focusing on Windows so let's click on enrollment notification you can click on create notification and let's say this is um, notification to end users click on next and push notification with a subject uh, and also with the message similarly email notification also will be uh, published just like a user will receive an email uh, with this message as well as the subject line and it will also include your company logo email foot over with the address uh, with the specific to the device specific details so in this case the OS family for example Windows or OS version model and the serial number of the device and the the device is registered with whose name or the device name so this information can be uh, we can show up so that that would actually give you some value to the end user okay so we can click on all of this stuff okay and that being said you know uh, once we have done this we can uh, click on the just like you know I'm just giving here a test message Okay, and click on next uh, scopes of course you know we are going to talk on the scopes also uh, within this lecture or in the upcoming we would focus on the scopes but for now every every configuration that we are talking about uh, within Microsoft Intune also have a scopes by default there is a default scope will be there otherwise you could have uh, multiple scopes like a region specific all of that you could you know assign them or a business specific and later point you can assign to all users or or the groups that's what you would be you know or doing based on the notification so in my case I've already created this as you can see um, here most of the configuration already done uh, this is the Windows enrollment notification and you have enrolled successfully with this but it's not it assigned to anyone so the users are not receiving any notification instead of that let's say if I uh, assign to all users every user will receive the specific email whenever they receive or whenever they try to enroll a device to Microsoft Intune and this is all about the enrollment notification here is the sample email that I can show you uh, when a enrollment notification appears for end user so end user is getting a similar kind of notification saying that you have enrolled to a new device and this is a device name and you can see more details with this when you click on that page it will take it to a portal dot manage dot microsoft dot com which is nothing but your company portal uh, website uh, so within this uh, it's like your this portal is like your 
interface from an end user point of view and user can see their devices their applications uh, and their profile they can also reach their help desk so this is an uh, we call this portal as the company portal uh, as a web portal for end users so to reach uh, this portal you can type portal.manage.microsoft.com and you can look into the devices so the current devices that are available it will be showing here so in my case uh, this is working as expected so this concludes uh, how to uh, configure your enrollment notifications and let's uh, move to the next topic in this case device setting so it actually talks about who can enroll and the number of devices that they can enable or they can enroll so we did talked about this uh, very clearly in the day nine uh, so if you can recall uh, we did actually shown these configurations so let me show you one more time uh, so if you just navigate to enter.microsoft.com and navigate to identity and devices all devices and the device settings so this is where uh, you have a configuration for who can register uh, so in this case it was configured for all users can join their devices to Microsoft Entra and also if you look at the maximum number of devices per user is 50 whereas with enrollment device limit restrictions which are available inside the device onboarding under enrollment you have an option for device limit restrictions which was configured by default as five devices so any user trying to enroll and also the devices maximum five can be enrolled in Microsoft Intune however for Microsoft Entra they can enroll 50 so now you might have a situation uh, where uh, the users are not going to enroll but you need to enroll as a with a generic account on a multiple machines more than five um, so in that situation you don't need to configure this configuration instead you can use something called here if you see here DM account or device enrollment managers account so this account can be utilized with the device enrollment uh, manager accounts uh, you can enroll up to 1000 devices per user so let's say I have a generic account like DM at a memcos.com example and this by using this account I can enroll up to 1000 devices so this will address my problem of if I, I if I have multiple devices that needs to be enrolled so in my case DM account was not there but let's say if I want to enroll like you know uh, Paddy at memcos.com so this account can be you know utilized now uh, and this can be enrolled up to 1000 devices so this is the advantage with the device enrollment manager so we learned about uh, device enrollment managers account um, now we also learned uh, during the enrollment uh, we have an option for the device categories so the end user can choose the device categories or we could even assign the uh, categories of any of the devices by going into device categories and then this is where all the device categories will be available as an admin you could do that if not as an end user you can do it uh, from company portal web portal so we did talk about the company portal for example if this is a device example uh, you could you know uh, categorize this specific device to a category so in this case it's a sales category was assigned so during the enrollment also you could do that we did talk about that in the previous lecture now it's time to learn about device cleanup rules uh, so you might have multiple stale entries or stale device entries that you need to clean up in that case you would be you know, configuring automated uh, device cleanup uh, with a configuration uh, with the multiple rules so that can be configured here if it just to go back to devices and device cleanup rules this is where the configuration can be enabled so you have here a custom day values that can be set from anywhere 32 or 270 days between so if a device is not checked in so what do you mean by checked in checked in means if a device if you just go back to any of the device here you have here lost check-in so when it was synced with uh, lost 
time it has tried to sync with your Microsoft Intune, that's called the lost check-in time. So this is the check-in time of that specific device. If it is falling more than the specified uh, days, uh, for example, in this case, uh, here, anywhere from 30 to 270 days between, and then as per the rule, it will delete it automatically. So it means it becomes as the stale or inactive, unresponsive that device for whatever the reason. So it will be automatically deleted. And just in case if you are thinking that, hey, I've just configured this, uh, for example, let's say 90 days and uh, similarly, I just clicked on save. What would happen is the deletion will run within 48 hours. So until then you would see up to within 48 hours the devices might see in your console as it is but uh, the really it will remove after 48 hours so don't expect that you save the configuration and it's not going to delete on an immediate basis that's how uh, device cleanup rules will work and one other important information is this deletion would happen on Microsoft Intune level. It's not going to delete at your Microsoft Entra. So all the devices will still show up in your Microsoft Entra. So make sure that you have to, you know, clear with your configuration. You are actually maintaining clean uh, with the active device list within Microsoft Intune. And also if you are, uh, sh if you are looking for the devices that are going to affect so during your configuration when you are trying to you know configure um, with some value it will actually show you the affected device list and it will show here the complete list and that can be exported even for your reference so this is all about the device cleanup rules i would recommend you to you know configure 90 days so within three months of time if a device is not checked in uh, it means there is something wrong with the device so we should be able to delete those devices so that we will ensure the complete compliance uh, policies and all other settings will be accurately reflecting in your Microsoft Intune portal. I hope I made it very clear uh, from a maintenance point of view uh, related to device cleanup rules. Now let's have a look on the company portal app. From an end user point of view, if I try to log in on the device and if I have an application called company portal, so this application can be pushed from Microsoft Intune portal automatically and uh, once you push the application, application will be installed on the client machine. So this can be pushed from the applications here under Windows applications. This is where you would be you know, pushing and we have not yet talked about the application deployment. That's why I'm not going to talk much but think that uh, think that this is actually an application that was already installed on a client machine uh, called company portal application so once a company portal application got installed on a client machine the user can open as an end user and if the device that he or she logged in uh, is not belongs to any of these categories it will prompt so in my case as you can see i'm just selecting as the accounting and post to that the device will be shown along with that uh, this is a device name and the applications all of that stuff will be visible so this is all about the company portal application however company portal application also can be viewed from a web-based portal which uh, we did talked about in the previous explanation about portal.manage.microsoft.com which will take you web-based company portal and the this company portal application is available for all type of platforms. So to be more precise, company portal application can be accessed over the web on a Windows app, Windows devices. Also, you have a application as a Windows app from Microsoft Store that can be deployed and same application company portal application can be deployed to your Google devices or Android devices as well as the iOS devices including Mac devices right and uh, it does help you um, to get your applications 
right you can see what are the available applications and the updates and the device management can be done so by using these uh, applic by using this company portal you could actually uh, check the status when the device is checked or you could even perform the a manual check for example if this is the device i could do an action to rename uh, remove or reset or I can click on check access meaning it will actually look for any non compliant device or it basically checks with Microsoft Intune to sync and get uh, all the latest policies and it will show you back so let's say if your device is not following uh, some complaints uh, policy is not showing in that situation what what we do as an end user is uh, once we fix those problems we can simply click on check now and this will go and sync with Microsoft Intune to get the uh, proper update so ultimately company portal will help you for checking status you can look for your applications like you know we have seen here some of the applications right and also you could uh, store your recovery information uh, for your Mac devices. You could get the recovery information for your Mac devices. You could get a recovery key for your Windows devices. You could remotely lock a device or reset. Uh, you could do you know multiple actions can be performed on that uh, device including renaming also possible of that device. So these are the a couple of options that you have uh, with the help of company portal and this is very important for the end user this is a power that we are giving to end users so that they can empowered with this specific tool the next chapter is the filters so we will learn uh, what is filter how to configure these filters and what is a use case of the filters in Microsoft Intune. Let's say you created a policy uh, that has to be assigned to a specific set of devices then uh, you can actually use a filter to assign that a specific policy to scope so that the rules will apply uh, based on that filters that we configured. Okay, Filters will uh, help you to more accurately target a specific devices or the voice version or manufacturer name or you could even target to only personal devices or corporate owned devices uh, such kind of you know filters are very useful let's say there is a policy that has to be deployed uh, just like you know antivirus example that policy has to be deployed to only corporate devices not to bring your own devices in that case you could apply a filter um, and when that filter will check automatically evaluated it gets only applied to include or exclude options can be used within filter so let me show you what I'm actually talking about it so if I just go back to devices I have here a filters option under organization organizing the devices uh, after the cleanup uh, you also have here filters so in my case I have created couple of uh, filters already but I would like to you know show you from a beginning um, what type of filters you could create so you could see here manage device this filter or application so are you actually gonna focus for this filter for application specific or a device so mostly if you are trying to work at this point of time with the device so click on device uh, filter now let's say this is for uh, corp owned devices so let's say what is this platform that you want to you know see so the target that we are trying to do is only corporate owned windows devices or corporate owned iphones so what we can do is we can target based on these platforms so in my case if you see here i could target windows 10 or later devices with a corporate so how do we do is we would actually create a rule or if you have already uh, have a rule you could simply paste it here rule uh, that would actually build the rule otherwise you can build a dynamic rule here for example the ownership if you see here device ownership is equals to okay that's an operator equals to corporate and as soon as I click on here syntax uh, this actually builds a query to create this filter and now you can see uh, very clearly the device ownership equals to corporate if you want to you know, build 
additional complexity devices even though it is a corporate device but uh, you also need to uh, example you want to target based on the voice version or where's uh, a specific uh, model or manufacturer let's say the manufacturer equals to example here I want to or target by Lenovo example uh, so then the devices that are corporate owned and the manufactured by Lenovo only will be getting this um, filter by using this what you could do is you could actually send some specific application think about it you are trying to deploy some application more specific to Lenovo devices and that to only corporate owned devices in that case this filter will be very useful right so like this you have multiple options as a properties uh, we call these are the properties and you could you know work for example device name starts with uh, or ends with contains uh, this would be a very useful case right uh, think about it if a device contains maybe HYD uh, or my region is maybe Redmond example so I might give you know maybe London example so these are very useful in terms of creating the rules once we have created these rules um, you can review and create it that would actually create a filter once we have the filter what we could do is we could apply these filters when we try to push some applications uh, for example if I try to deploy an application we just talked about company portal application right this company portal application if you are trying to deploy uh, from the properties you have an option to click on assignment so this is where we are actually targeting with some application uh, called company portal for all accounts team example but we wanted to filter the mode here only include to bring your own device which is personal or maybe only corporate devices Windows devices or some other uh, username a device name is this or maybe contains i7 uh, in the device name like this you know you could use a multi uh, purpose filters and these filters can be reused multiple times so once you have done this you can simply save this specific application similarly you could do even for your complaints policies you could do even configuration uh, policies also wherever it is applicable the filters will talk about include and exclude the filter mode and based on that it gets deployed and there are two more points that I need to cover with specific to filters let's say if there is any device uh, we could find out if this device is getting some uh, specific filters are getting evaluated or not so you see here this is a device uh, which I have selected I can go to filter evolution and see if this device is receiving some policies uh, which are filtered it would actually show you here so this device is getting a uh, filters uh, based on the uh, BYOD and CYOD uh, rules it is actually getting a filter evolution so with the exclude and it is matched because it's a company owned so like this you could get the more detailed information uh, about that specific device right now let's also have a look on it uh, directly from the filter level so we talked about the device level individual uh, if the filter is getting applied or not but if I just go back to uh, like here uh, on one of the filter and simply look at associated assignments you can see that this filter was actually applied for complaints policies uh, is a configuration policy or maybe a complaints policy based it is getting applied so there are some situations where you need to find out if this filter is applied or not at the device level or the policy level you can simply visit these uh, filters directly and look at the associated policies so that way uh, you can work with the filters filters are really a next level of funnel uh, to filter the required resources so this is really really helpful with all the filters uh, we would be losing the more power uh, from the Microsoft Intune if you are from 
SCSM background uh, filters similar to your linked collections or filtering uh, one or other collection uh, for your targets similar to that but filters are really useful okay now we talked about the dynamic group also uh, when we uh, we talked about dynamic groups in the previous lecture so now let's talk about scope scope tags are really key in terms of uh, getting applying the policies or isolating the resources by using the scope tags we can filter as an administrators we can filter the resources so this is a next level of uh, funnel uh, from the filters I would say uh, it, it, it's going to be a resources for example if I log in I'm the responsible for London resources uh, when I log into Intune I would only see the Intune specific uh, resources that are coming from London and if you are trying to log in uh, to the portal maybe Asia Pacific uh, region uh, you are responsible in that situation you would only see those devices so how this is possible is this is possible with the role-based access uh, control uh, definitely but you would be using in the back end scope tags so the scope tags are really really useful um, this is what we are going to learn now scope tags let's understand in one word what are Microsoft Intune scope tags so to use the Intune scope tags uh, for your administrative users uh, you could you know get a filter view of your securable objects so any object if that belongs to a specific scope tag that gets filtered and it will be available for your administrators to view uh, from the admin portal that's what uh, it's gonna useful from an administrative point of view. let's validate the scope tags by going to uh, one of the windows device uh, let's say I have already configured the scope tags. I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. So you could, you know, see here a co-managed device. So just click on this device and go to the properties. And you should be able to see here the currently assigned scope tags. In this case, there are US and USA. Both the scope tags has been assigned. Just in case, if you want to assign additional scope tags, also can be assigned but how this is automatically assigned that's what we are going to see so by default if it is assigned as default the user anyone who is the local uh, who is the Intune admin will be able to see uh, and also it's a default one so what we do is normally we would remove the default and we would uh, make it more specific to a specific to a region so in this case I wanted to see all the uh, USA region specific uh, devices and their policies uh, because I wanted to uh, create a group uh, your specific region and assign the policies with that specific group so how we are going to do uh, how we are going to do is we would you know navigate to tenant administration for creating the scope tags uh, you have to navigate to tenant administration under roles and here you can create the uh, scope tags uh, within the uh, roles uh, just beside the roles manage you have uh, creating the scope tags so you can create the required scope tags so let's say if I want you know uh, create here uh, California and entering here as a California example this is the scope tag I'm gonna create now this scope tag can be assigned to what type of devices so you see here this is gonna assign to all devices in the selected security group so in my case I've already created a security group uh, in this case scope tag demo specific uh, this is the USA devices scope tag and added couple of devices also in this group uh, so that these devices will automatically will have the scope tag as California so let me uh, proceed with the uh, creation of the scope tag and click on create and later point now if I just go back to uh, groups let me also show you from all groups and here uh, within this USA device scope tag you can see couple of devices there are two devices are there one with the co-managed other one is the BYOD so desktop hyphen like you know uh, HVP and 1101 these are the two devices that we are talking about so these two devices should have uh, automatically tag for US and US 
A and California also. So let's add these three uh, just for you know demonstrating this. So once we create these scope tags, you have to you know look for the roles. So let's say your company is global company and you have multiple Microsoft Intune admins or a different type of level of support that your your team is offering, maybe a level one, level two, or help desk, and you want to limit their access to a specific set of devices, just like California specific devices or US region, or or maybe a specific uh, devices that you are selectively selecting and making them to only visible, so that other devices also when they log in they don't. Uh, see them. So to do that what we can do is you can actually look for the role based administration uh, or the roles that are available built in. If you see here there are close to 10 different roles are available. So pick up the suitable role. For example, uh, I'm going to demonstrate with the help desk role. Uh, so I can choose this role simply and click on duplicate. So I would say use help desk team, right? This is help desk team role uh, this is what I'm going to give the name and now all these permissions let's say you want to you know, disable some of the additional permissions uh, you could do it or you could uh, even uh, grant a little further extra uh, permissions also by using this RBAC customization wizard so in my case I'm just using the default because we will have a dedicated video on role based access management this is the demo of, for only scope tags so let's go to the scope tag and now I'm gonna select here the required scope tags you see here default is there so I'll just uh, select here first and later point I'll remove it so in the scope tags, I have California, US, USA, this three, and then I don't want default. Let's say I can remove the default one now. Three of them has been uh, created. Now, we have the uh, help desk one. Uh, oh, the name has something wrong. Let me correct it quickly. And we could see that uh, the users, whoever logs in, should have this permission so what I've done is I have also created an additional uh, user called Maddie at memcos.com and I made that user uh, belongs to a specific uh, group also so, so let's add that user so what we have done is we have cloned one of the uh, role and then we are assigning the permissions uh, for that specific role so in this case I'm gonna assign here uh, called region use your region and then I'll assign a group called uh, Madi so there's a group dedicated group called created uh, for a single user called Madi group so in in your case if multiple users they are um, they need the help desk permissions uh, who are belongs to US region and they need to only view and configure any policies applications with respect to your specific in that situation you would a create a group called help this group and add all those users just like this and then select here uh, the group and in the scope groups you can add the required devices so I did also created an additional group in this case uh, devices group this is uh, so you see here US devices uh, that are a member of this group and now these devices will automatically get the required scope tax gets assigned automatically just because we did even added here right so because of this uh, the devices that are part of this group will receive the scope tax automatically and now you see here the scope tax can be assigned uh, also like yours uh, and also California this three click on next create so now we use one of the uh, custom role by using the R back and we assigned there uh, also to help this team as well as the we also added the users so that being said if I just go back to any of any of the devices so that are for example these are the devices right this is a group that we used as part of our testing so use devices group so in this group uh, whatever the devices are there for example here you could see uh, HVP ending computer 
this is the HVP ending computer. So if I just click on here, in a couple of minutes under properties, I should be able to see three scope of uh, scopes like USC, US and California. These three were I'm able to see. That means it is actually working as expected. But what needs uh, to be additional thing to be tested is we need to test now if a user called Maddy logs in, he should have the permission. So here is the user account. Uh, I would you know log in with this as a Maddy. So you see here, here is a Maddy account, right? And if I just go back to the devices, I should be able to see only two devices instead of uh, six devices. Since we just tried uh, after adding in a couple of minutes, so we did not give much time to system to process all those changes. So we got the error, but if I waited a couple of one or two seconds, I could see that the devices are uh, just showing as a two devices you see here and from the devices there are only two right uh, which are in this case the personal device and corporate device whereas if I just go back to other so let me show you side by side and you could see here uh, with the user Paddy and with the user Maddie uh, there is a difference right the view is completely different uh, so as expected, the devices that have scope assigned only are visible, right? And if I have to configure any kind of, you know, configurations or policies that will not be visible for this user, because uh, if you see here, the configurations for Paddy is many of the configurations are available, but not for Maddie. The reason being, if I just expand further this page from a Paddy user, all these have scope tag as default instead of the California or maybe US or USA. So if I just add these additional uh, scope tags for some reason, um, just for testing any of them, I should be able to see uh, as a MADI user uh, here in a couple of minutes. So I just have to wait or log off login. I should be able to see here uh, the configuration item that we have done. See, it's just coming up, right? Uh, so this is how it works. So from it technically what you would be doing is as a intern admin when you are trying to design you should be uh, you should be uh, sure to uh, scope uh, create the scope tags and properly properly assign the policies um, all of them the resources that are available in this case it could be your configuration profiles or policies or what not any setting that is available within Microsoft Intune have to assign with a proper scope tags. So this is my uh, suggestion for you all whoever trying to learn from this zero to hero training series. You have to plan at the first the scope tags like how many admins are you have and based on that you plan it and then uh, based on your design you could you know proceed further. Uh, that being said, I'll catch you in the next lecture uh, with a continuation uh, with the day 11 uh, very soon. We will be covering all of the uh, remaining options uh, in that specific lecture.